All right, guys. So we got to talk about the fever. They won the seven now after they close law another close game with the Sparks. Now they beat the Sparks the first time in LA. The Sparks came back, be doomed this time around on their home court, which we saw on a career high from Caitlin Clark. She had 30 points. She's been averaging, you know, pretty much about 14, 15 points a game. This 30 point game will boost her up probably about to close to 18, a little bit more. Um, but nevertheless, Clark um, did all she could do. She um, she led both she led both teams in scoring. But the something that stood out in this game was that Alita Boston got in foul trouble a little earlier, but. It was a crucial point in the game because Caitlin had got Caitlin got a tip, which to me, um, I, I don't think that would warrant because the tech was not explained why she got a tip. The referee didn't go over to the coach to explain why they got a tip. The coach never asked the referee why Caitlin got a tip. No explanation was given in the first quarter. But nevertheless, the fever went down um, by halftime by eight points, which Caitlin had, I think she had like 14 points at that time. She was hot. She was, she was doing everything that she needed to do. Um, but despite Clark's hot shooting, the rest of the team, the bench, did not show up. This is a this is to me. I think is real crucial, and I think this is where um, they need to find a solution. A f find a solution to where they have to find balance, especially when, um, especially when Caitlin Clark is not in the game. How are you going to run the offense? You have to run the offense where you're going to have to have better spacing, especially when you have two ball-dominant persons like Wheeler and, um, and Mitchell on the floor, especially if you bring Wheeler in for Caitlin. Caitlin spaces the floor when she's on the floor because she dribbles, she gets behind screens. She and she finds she looks the pass, even though she, you know, she definitely looks the score. Also, she looks the pass. But when you have Wheeler and Mitchell on the floor, it's congested because they both penetrators. You know, they don't look to pass the ball. They dribble with their head down. They never look up. They never see Ben Lane over there, or they never see Boston over here. This or um, play inside outside where you set it up with Boston and she can't get a shot, she kicks it back out. You know what I'm saying? And then you got Samuelson. She's slow. She can't run up and down the court, but she can set a shot. But I think the person that needs to come in a little bit more is I think um, Lexi. Lexi Hall plays very well with Caitlin Clark. She, when Caitlin pushes the ball, she finds Lexi. Lexi holds the ball, or she try to make a move, but she do find the ball back to Caitlin. That's where, when Mitchell, when Mitchell and when Mitchell and Caitlin's on the floor, Mitchell needs to, Mitchell needs to, um, Mitchell needs to find the ball back to Caitlin, where Caitlin can set everybody up. If you don't find the ball back to Kaylin and you take your own shot, there's times, I mean, they miss, they miss so much easy layups in, in the game where I don't see Mitchell drive and she um when um Mitchell drives, she throws the ball up it so hard. She doesn't try to do a, a nice layup. Look at Wallace getting beat. Wallace got beat by McDonald. McDonald had a good game off the bench, you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, I think she started. I'm not sure. But, no, Rika, um, Rika Jackson started, which she had a nice, solid game. Um, Cameron Brink then had a good game. She had a solid game, rebounding and block shots. But when you got your star player like Kate McClark doing everything, she played 34 minutes, 30 points, five rebounds, six assists, seven for 16 from the field, three for 10 from three point line, three for four, 13 for 15 from um, the free throw line. Then she had three blocks, three steals, seven turnovers, five personal fouls. She was a plus four. She would have had probably a, a plus, plus would have went up more if she had cut down the turnovers. But nevertheless, she had to do it all. She had to do it completely all because Fed Bentley got in foul trouble. She didn't play much. She scored, she played, she was on the floor for 32 minutes. She only had 6.7 rebounds. That's good. She was three for five from the field, so that's not bad. She only had one block. She had one steal, one turnover. Um, she but she had six personal fouls, she filed out, and she but she was a plus five in that time. Kelsey Mitchell, she would play 29 minutes. She had 15 points, two assists. She was five for 15 from the, from the field, three for seven for three-point line. Excuse me, guys. She was two for four from the field. She had one steal, one turnover, one personal foul. And to me, for her to have one personal foul, that just shows me: Are you really playing defense? Because if you, if you, you, Caitlin used her fouls. Ben Lane used her fouls. Wallace, she had three fouls. She was a plus, she was a minus six. You know why? She had twenty eight minutes in the fucking game. Twenty eight minutes in the game, and you only gave five points. You only had three rebounds, three assists. You was two for nine for the field. You was one for six from three point lane. You only had one block. You had four steals, which is decent. But you didn't contribute in points. If you're, if you're a starting point guard or shooting guard, whatever you is, and you play 28 minutes, you need more production than that. Now, like I said, Aaliyah Boston, she played out of all the starters. She played less than she, she had 23 points. I mean, 23 minutes, but she picked, she had five personal fouls, but she picked up three personal fouls in the first half. So that kind of slowed her momentum. But she did take um, 17 points. She came on in the second half. Um, she had six rebounds, two assists. She was five for nine from the field, which is decent. She was two for two for three point line, and she was five for six for the free throw line. So that's, she had a good second half you know, to recuperate from the first half. Because Kaylin, Kaylin carried the first half. Then Mitchell started, you know, when Mitchell, um, when Mitchell caught on in the third quarter because Kaylin went out with four minutes. She was on the bench for four minutes. When she, um, she was out for like four, around the four-minute mark of the first, um, the third quarter. And she came in, um, I think she came in towards the tail end of the third quarter and played the whole fourth quarter. But um, Boston, like I said, she was a plus 12. Now, Kelsey Mitchell was a minus 17. Minus 17, you played 29 minutes. Boston played 23 and was a plus 12. You see how that is? So when Kelsey Mitchell's on the floor, she's looking for more for her shot than she's looking to distribute the ball to other players. And that's something that has to change. You know what I'm saying? Because I can tell you this. If the Indiana Fever go through the whole season like this and they end up with the number one, they end up with the number one pick, um, the number one pick, what's going to happen if they pick, if they do land page backers, and they land Paige Beckers. Kelsey Mitchell is dead. She's gone. Because I think Paige and Caitlin will be able to run the offense. I think Paige will be able to run the point. 
And I won't be surprised if they was to pick up Haley Van Lip in a, in a later round. Because I think Haley Van Lip is not a first round pick, but she's a second round pick. And I think if any had to pick her, you definitely could use her to run the point guard in the second half. And especially when Kaylin and Paige, either Paige and Kaylin does, I mean, Paige or Kaylin is on the bench. And you have a point guard that can strip the ball. And pay, and then you can have somebody like Paige that stay on the floor and still score. But they definitely need, they definitely need a, 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 a something different for this team because the way this team going is 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 bad. You look at Wheeler, seventeen points, seventeen points. You only had two points, two assists, one for three for field, zero for three, two steals, two fouls, a plus one. When you could have gave Lexi Hall more, you could have split that them minutes down with Lexi Hall because she only had two points. Two rebounds, one assist, one for four for field. She only had, had took one three pointer. She had no steals, no blocks. She had two turnovers, but she was a minus. She was a um, minus one. You know what I'm saying? Berger didn't get no play. Uh, Saxon didn't get no play. Uh, Celeste um, Taylor didn't get no play. Which I want to see Celeste Taylor get a play. Samuelson, thirteen points. Two points. I mean, 13 minutes, two points. You know what I'm saying? One rebound, 0 for 3, a minus 4. Come on, man. Nisha, Naisha Smith, 19 minutes, three points. I think and that's a three pointer assist. She had four rebounds, one assist. She was 1 for 3 from the field, 1 for 1. She was a minus 24 with one person foul. It's crazy. <laughs> they don't have a, they do not have a bench, man. You gotta look at it. Fever was 38% from the field, where the Sparks was 47. They shot 61% from three-point line because they did not close out on the three-pointers. They didn't stop the ball. You saw Samuelson running around. You got two people in the area dealing with one person, and then when you finally realize it, the person with the three pointers is way back there. Now, the FIBA was 80% from the free throw line. There was 33% from three point line. Like I said, Celeste Taylor, Berger, um, whoever, the other person that's on the bench. You need to see if these these girls will come in and give scoring. Lord have mercy, excuse me. Give scoring because the fact of the matter is, is that the field goal percentage and the three point percentage. If 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 Caitlin is not trying to make these three point shots, it's it's not going to work. Kia Nurse had a good game. She shot well from three. And we already, McDonald had an excellent game. She shot well. Now, no. And, and, and what's bad was they shot, the Spartans shot so well from three point land, and they had 19 turnovers. They both had 17 assists, they both rerouted. Um, the Fever had nine offensive uh, offense rebounds, 28 total. They only were out rebounded by two two rebounds. The Fever had 30. I mean, the Sparks had 30. The Fever had six blocks to five. The Fever had six steals, I mean, 12 steals to nine. But they committed 26 fouls. That's another issue. They have to learn how to they got to learn how to play defense without fouling so fast they pick up silly fouls and then the one tech came from um caitlin so now this is the other part so after the press conference they asked chrissy um 
to ask um, Paul, I mean, not um, size, Chrissy size, what, um, you know, about the, the um, what can they do a little bit more, you know, about the tech? And she pretty much threw her player under the bus. She threw her players under the bus, saying you can't be out there talking to the referee and wasting your time. Um, we can't do that. We can't get text. If we're going to get a tech, let me get a tech. Well, you know what, Chrissy? You should have had your players back. You don't have your players' best interest. You don't have your players um, um, back. Because right in the there, when Kaylin got that tech, you should have been up in that referee to find out why you got that tech. But I'm going to let y'all listen to what she had to say. First of all, what stood out to you about that start to the second half where you ripped off 11 in a row and then along the same lines, then they answered with 28 to 8? Yeah. That was a tough stretch. I mean, what we were doing early to them defensively in our schemes, we stopped doing in the second half, um, especially during that stretch. I mean, 60% from the three, you don't give yourself a chance if, if somebody if you let somebody shoot. You know, that's four of that 42 points in threes. I mean, you don't you don't give yourself a chance. I was going to be about mine, but to follow up on that, did you think they got high quality threes? What do you feel like led to that number percentage we, being so high? Yeah, we watched uh, right when we got in there. We just wanted to see and, you know, we were going under some of the screens that we're supposed to be going over on these shooters. So it was just and we were gambling, um, getting out of position and then late to where we were supposed to be. So just a, a breakdown on our defense. Statistically, one of Kaylin's best games in just about every category. What did you see from her in particular? One thing I want to know what you think about is her getting the foul line in this game and what led to her doing that so much. Yeah, I think she was attacking. She was getting downhill, but she was also spraying out as well. Um, you know, they're just going to, the way they're going to defend her, you know, they could probably have called about five or six more fouls with how they keep both hands on her. But, you know, I thought she did a good job of getting other people involved. I know she had some downhill drives that she had Kelsey. Um, you know, she shot the ball well tonight. I know she needed to feel good about that. Uh, Christy, you just kind of talked about how you felt like some of the closeouts on threes um, were maybe mistakes that you feel like the team shouldn't be making. Um, why do you think those things happen? Is it a product of the team being young, or is it just one of those nights? You know, I don't, I'm not going to give them, I, you know, you can't do something right for two and a half quarters and then just stop doing it. So I, I'm not going to say that's young, that's discipline. How do you feel like? Um, as far as discipline goes, that can change moving forward? Yeah, they just got to, you know, we've got to rally, come tomorrow, talk about what went wrong, how it went wrong, why it went wrong, why we couldn't figure it out, um, and get ready to come back against Seattle. Obviously, it's hard to feel optimistic after a loss, um, but before the game you were talking about transition defense, forcing turnovers, and offensive rebounds. Um, I believe all those categories were victories for you guys. Um, do you feel good about your performance in those categories? It's really hard to feel good about my performance all, at all right now. Just this was a game that was ours to, you know, this is a home game. This is a game we're supposed to win. You know, we give up 24 points off turnovers. Um, too many turnovers in the fourth. Um, too many that led to easy points for them. You know, they went to the free throw line, I think, 33 times. I'd say six of them were at the end because we were fouling. But 27 is way too many. And that was discipline. That was just, you know, instead of us stand, stepping over and stopping, being having our teammates back, we're reaching and fouling. And that's just, you know, that's just lack of discipline. And last one for me. I'm just curious. Caitlin got that tech at the end of the first quarter. Um, did you get a reason as to why that was? Because it was kind of unclear from our perspective. Yeah, we, we've got to, you know, we, we're spending too much time talking to the officials. That We've got to leave that alone. Like, we've got to just play our game and let them do their job and not put it in their hands to make decisions that, you know, that ultimately hurt us. I mean, we don't want, like, no, we shouldn't get technicals. Let me get the technicals. Let me get, let me, let me go after the officials. All right. You hear what Christy Sides had to say. Now, she saying that her team spent too much time talking to the officials. Okay, Christy. You need to be talking to the officials. You should have had your team back. You should have made sure that your team was together. You should have made sure that your team 
had to do the things that they needed to do in place. Now, you sit there complaining and say, oh, your team, they don't need to. Well, guess what? If you had went to the referee, asked him and said, well, hey, what was the tech for? What was the tech about? Then they could have gave you an explanation. The referee should have, the, usually, even in football, the referee makes a call, he'll go to the coach, explain it to him. You know, Chrissy seems like she's, she's just coaching the team just to coach the team. She's not coaching them to make them out of winners or better players. She just harps and complains about them not doing this. They're not disciplined. They're not doing this. But it's your job as a coach to motivate them and make them sure they're disciplined. You don't do all of that. You complain about, well, y'all got a long schedule and all of this. Okay, that's fine and good. But guess what? Have film session. Go in there and we'll have a walkthrough. You know what I'm saying? A shoot around. Run some kind of set plays. You can't just not have a practice. Have some kind of practice in there. You know what I'm saying? The day before you you at home for the next three next two games. Why you cannot have a practice? That's what I don't understand. Why you cannot practice today? Y'all off? Why not practice today? Why not practice in the morning? Why not practice in the evening? And then practice in the morning. Then come back and have an afternoon shoot around. You the only way that you gonna build continuity with this team. You gonna have to tell them, hey, I need y'all here. I understand y'all played last night. Y'all want to rest a little bit. Okay, guess what? We're going to have early morning film session. Or we're going to have practice. We're going to go over something. We're going to have, we're going to have an hour film session. Then we're going to have um, about an hour or two of practice. Then we're going to come back later this afternoon, let y'all go rest, eat, you know, whatever y'all need to do. And then um, come back and we're going to have a walkthrough. Take that whole day to utilize the fundamentals of your team and then have them ready. If you do not have them ready, then it's, it's a waste. It's a damn waste. And Chrissy Side is not utilizing it, especially you home. You home. You not going nowhere. Use the facility. You don't play again until Thursday night. So therefore, why wait? Today should be right back, right back at it. You know what I'm saying? Not taking a damn day off and then say, oh, we ain't got no practice. That's dumb. That is so dumb. And that's why Chrissy size is not gonna last. Because you got it. you you got it. There's a possibility that you will lose all three of these next games. Because Chicago is not a bad Chicago is a decent team. They they up and coming too. You know, Angel Reese is gonna be, she's going to be. She will, you know, she's going to be like, boom, she's going to talk shit and she, you know what I mean? They're going to have to come out and play. The Angel Reese is not going to come out there and play with them. You know, yeah, everything is on Kate McClark right now. Look at it, Wheeler. You know, looking at these highlights, Wheeler. She, she can't. Chris decided need to figure out something that she needs to do with this lineup. You know, you need to mix it up. You need to ruffle some feathers. Say, hey, we're going to go with a whole new lineup. Put a different point guard in. You know, um, sit Wallace down. She, she's not good. Wallace is not good. She can't hit shots. She stands out there. She gets last on defense. She's not a good – Sanderson's not good defensively. Wallace is not good defensively. So why not allow somebody like Lexi Hall or – Celeste Taylor or, you know, whoever else is on that bench, come out there and play. Put pressure on these teams. You know, Kaylin is going to create shots for people to hit, be able to hit. You don't know what you got right there. So, personally, Caitlin Great Knight was ruined by Chrissy Sides. On the note, Caitlin Clark is the first rookie ever in WNBA history to record 30 points, five, re five assists, five rebounds, three steals, three blocks in the game. She's the first rookie ever to do that. Um, now, there was other four players that did that, but not as a rookie. And that was Brianna Stewart, Diamond Taurasi, and Angela McGuffley. So kudos to Caitlin Clark for doing that. 
And right now she's tied. She's tied with the top Natasha Cloud for the Phoenix Mercury and assists. She total assists. Um, the week two, she has 44, and Natasha Cloud has 44. They tied first. But she's tied fourth in, in assists per game. So um, Skylar Diggins is fourth, and Alisa Thomas for her. So my thing is this here. I think um, if if Caitlin Caitlin's probably gonna be having about 17 points again, by 18 points again, she could probably have another 20 plus game Thursday. If she average, if she average like um eight eight assists, six to eight assists. Um, she probably could be. She could probably take the leaderboard. You know, that'll give her what about fifty something. So, because I think Natasha Cloud is averaging like eight point eight a game. Yeah, she averaging eight point eight assists a game. So that's another milestone for her. So, like I said, right now, the feet the FIBA team is kind of like they don't have. Nothing there. They bench didn't get enough to tonight. You know, I mean, if you think about it, if you take that 30 points away from what Kayla and Clark did, that would have been a complete blowout. Um, uh, also, I think that, also, I think that they kind of like went after um, Fed Bailey. I think they went after her because they knew she runs the floor. Um, I think Natasha Smith, she's going to have to run the floor. They're going to have to put players out there. To me, I, I want to see something different. I mean, right now it's early in the season. They don't play, what, out of 40 games? They don't play seven? Were they eight games already? So... Um, yeah, but I don't know, guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Um, Kate, like I said, Caitlin, great night. It was a great night for her statistically, but the FIBA still found a way to lose the game because your coach is inept to, she don't know how to use timeouts. She don't know how to use time management. She just sits there and just, you know, blame everybody while I'm taking accountability. Or so look here, look here, and I'm looking at how like, she's just walking up the, grabbing a clipboard and walking up the floor. She don't even. She looks fucking lost, man. She's Chrissy size looks fucking lost, man. She doesn't have no energy or anything, no continuity. To me, either either Lisa Bluter or uh, somebody, a guy that could come and coach women basketball and bring um some somebody from the nba to bring see i'm gonna tell you what what made becky hammond good at her job coaching because she sat over there in the nba with popovich and she brought some of that that terminology over to the las vegas aces so that's helped these girls run that, to me, honestly, I would want to see somebody from the NBA, a coach from the NBA, come over and coach this team and say, hey, look, come and coach this team, implement, you know, a system, how guys get somebody from, I don't know, get somebody from Popovich Tree, get somebody from Steve Kerr Tree, and show them how, show these ladies. Because I think you're going to need that kind of offense for Kate McClark. She's so much, she, she commands so much. This is why this girl gets double teamed the way she does in the league. Because you best believe it. If they was not double teaming her, Kayla Clark would have been averaging 30 points a game right now. In, se in seven games, she would have been averaging 30 points. You got to think, the Connecticut Suns, the New York Liberty, the Las Vegas Aces, they all know this girl is the truth. It's despite all of this, these narrative and all of this stuff is out there, they know this girl is the truth. That's why they double her all the time. Now, the Seattle Storm and 
the um the Sparks. They're the only two teams that has not doubled her that way. And she was able to get off on them. She got, I think, she got 20 or oh, 20 points. Um she, they got 20, she got 20 points on um She got 20 points, I think, against Seattle. I think she had 20 points against the Sparks, and I think she had another 20-point game against New York the second time around. And now she got a 30-point game. So they know this girl is, is the truth. They just don't want her to get off because if she gets off and gets going the way she went off tonight, she can easily be the, the league's leading scorer quickly. And it's still time. And she, if Kayla just say, you know what, the hell with everything, we ain't going to win games anyway because this roster is ass, go out there and lead the league and score. Lock up, go and lock up the damn, um, lock up, oh, shit. Oh. Um, Lock up the um the um rookie of the year. Lock it up. You'll lead the league in scoring. You'll lead the league in assists. Hell, I mean, what? There ain't nobody else gonna beat you in there. Cause guess what? Nobody can outscore you. So hell, do what you do. But anyway, guys, continue to like, comment, subscribe. Until the next until the next um FIBA video. I salute. Take care.